I'm giving you that love, that compassion. And when you're moved with that compassion, whatever you pray shall be heard. Today, when I speak to the broken-hearted people, when I pray for the broken-hearted people, when I pray for the people who need the healing touch of Jesus Christ, I cry because the great compassion flows from me and through me. This is the secret of the ministry of Jesus calls. And this is how the ministry of Jesus calls was born to bring healing to the broken hearted around the world. When the Lord Jesus saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion. A sea of humanity indeed. 200,000 to 500,000 people gather at the Jesus Calls Crusades anywhere in India or abroad. Lives are transformed in millions. Bodies are healed. Families are reunited. Baptized with the Holy Spirit. Creative miracles happen. Signs and wonders. We will say very most welcome to the good news. And this is a big privilege for me today and to introduce for you the man you already have seen uh, now on the screen, uh, Paul Dinadakaran from India. And uh, we will let him tell about this mighty thing, the mighty Lord of Lords are doing in India. And we will say very much welcome to the program today. <laughs> this is a really privilege for us to have you here. And I believe you have an actual message for the people of Europe. Thank you very much for your coming. Can you uh, tell us something from the beginning of your uh, ministry mm -hmm. in India and uh, how God uh, show you to do what you are doing? <laughs> Thank you very much for having me in your program okay. and I deeply appreciate all that you are doing to put hope into the hearts of the people and that is your mission mm -hmm. and certainly the Lord came into this world to give us hope yeah. and we are his ambassadors Amen. and I'm so glad to hear that this program is going to be all over Europe and even in the Middle East yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, more and more people are going to be blessed and everyone who stands with you yeah. to bring this program to be a blessing to the people they are going to be blessed yeah. because they are going to get more souls yeah. <laughs> into yes. their account yes. <laughs> yes. well I'm so glad to be uh, here all the way from India yeah. India is a hot country Yes, <laughs> you've been that, there yeah, yeah. <laughs> for nearly 38 times you've yes, been there yes. uh, we mm -hmm. touch nearly 43 degrees Celsius yeah, yeah. burning hot yes. and coming to Denmark it's a luxury for us it's oh. so sweet <laughs> time a little too cold <laughs> <laughs> now it's the best time yeah, yes, well uh, in India as you know there are more than one billion people yes it's a country of people 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 yes. everywhere you see people yes <laughs> and uh, you know in india there's so much of poverty so much of um, 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 darkness and so on so uh, several years ago it all started with my father his father was a teacher so he went through much poverty in India, we don't have social security as you have here. Mm. 
um, everyone has to work. If they don't get a work, they can't live at all. No. Mm -hmm. And especially even the work, you know, some positions you don't get the uh, wages enough to support your family. Mm -hmm. My father's father was a teacher and uh, at that time he grew up in so much of poverty and uh, um, my uh, father's life was not connected to God. Mm. So he went away from God. He was a failure in his education mm. and his mother was very sick. And uh, he said, I have no job and I have no hope in this world. And he said, it's better that I kill myself rather than live. And he was going towards the railroad to fall before the express train to kill himself. Okay. On the way, his uncle met him. He never knew my father's intentions. Mm -hmm. He said, Denakaran, why don't you ask God to help you? <laughs> my father said, what God? God doesn't love me. Mm -hmm. I don't think there is a God. If God is there, then why am I suffering like this? No. He said, no. Mm. God came into this world in the form of a human being to understand your agony, to understand your loneliness, and to make a way for you. And for that, he went to the cross and he took all the sufferings caused by sin caused by curse, caused by sickness upon his body. Mm -hmm. And he overcame them and he came back triumphant to help you. So you ask him, you say, Jesus, I believe you shed your blood for my sins to be washed away, for me to get out of curses and for me to live. He will help you. My father said, will he help me? <laughs> Will he give me peace? Yeah. Will he give me a job? Yeah. Mm -hmm. His uncle said, yes, yeah. he will. Okay. You ask him. Yeah. And he went to his room mm -hmm. and he said, Jesus, if you are God, mm -hmm. I must know you as a reality. Yeah. Otherwise, let me die here. Mm -hmm. And the presence of God came. Yeah. It was a long experience. God transformed him and Jesus appeared to him. And he saw him face to face for three full hours. Mm. And Jesus said, my son, because you sought me diligently, I have come personally to bless you. Many people ask, is Jesus a reality? Yeah. Yes, if you seek him diligently, you can find him. And Jesus said, my son, there are millions of people in this world who are like you without hope, mm -hmm. who have not tasted real love in this world. I have chosen you mm -hmm. to carry my love to these millions of people. When you stand up and tell them, Jesus loves you, there is hope for you. And when you listen to their cry and you cry on their behalf to me, mm -hmm. pray to me for them, I will come and wipe away their tears. I will remove the sin, I will remove the sickness, I will remove their poverty, I will remove their curses and I will give them life. I will give them life to live on. And that's how his ministry began. He became a bank officer. God gave him a good job, pulled him out of poverty and gave him a family and gave him a sweet little boy, that's me, <laughs> and brought him great joy. And added to that, he began to tell everybody about the love of God. Yeah. And yeah. Jesus would come, stand by his side, and reveal the problems of the people to him. And he would cry and pray for the people. And that's how the crowds grew in our public meetings yeah. to 200,000 to 500,000 people. Yeah. And they are drawn by the love of God. Yeah. People need hope, and only Jesus can give them hope. And this attracted me. When I was a young man, I went away from God <laughs> mm. and uh, enjoyed the pleasures of this world. But then a terrible fear came into my heart. Mm. 
because the Bible says the wages of sin is death. One side it's physical death, the other side is spiritual death, where you don't enjoy the joy that God gives us. You may live in this world, but yet you'll be dead in your soul. You don't have joy. Only when God comes in, there is joy. <laughs> so I was dead. I was studying the best college, the best course, but yet in my heart I was dead, full of fear because of all the addictions, all the pleasures of the world. And this fear was tormenting me. When one day I went, I was taken to a meeting. And it, it was my father who was speaking that day. I'd listened to him thousands of times before. But still that day, he said, God can make you a somebody in this world. You may be a nobody in this world today, yeah. but come to God. He will make you a somebody. Amen. You will have a recognition to live in this world. You will have joy, you will have strength, and you will have meaning to live in this world. You can become a somebody today in this world. Yeah. And I said, I want to be a somebody. I am a nobody. That's why I am full of fear. Yeah. And I cried and cried. In the presence of God. Without my knowledge, I began to cry and said, Lord, help me. Make me a somebody. Come into my heart. When he comes in, you become a somebody. It's no more you, but Christ living in you. Amen. And God rising up within you, you feel you are somebody. And you feel you have meaning in your life. And that day, God changed my life. All my addictions left me. I became a new man. I did very well in my education. I got a gold medal when I got my convocation for my BSc degree mm -hmm. in physics. <laughs> then I did my master's in business administration. Then my PhD, mm -hmm. the doctorate in uh, advertising, okay. and got into media. <laughs> oh, so this was a good, uh, a good study for the minister you are doing right now? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so then God united me with my father and gave me the same compassion for the people. Yeah. Yeah. Compassion is everything. Yes. When I see the young people without hope, mm. I feel for them because I've been where they are. Yeah. And I tell them, don't lose hope. Mm. And the love of God just flows mm. and draws them to God. And today, by God's grace, through the public meetings, there are thousands of young people who come to God and the miracles that God does to transform their lives and transforming them to become transformers of other people. <laughs> that is the greatest miracle. I have uh, never met you in uh, India, but I have seen your TV program yes. uh, many times. Uh, can you tell something about what there are? I, I see what you show on TV in India. This is so <laughs> wonderful. Can you tell something about what there really are, can happen with people when okay. they are watching the program? Uh, it's amazing how God opened television yeah. uh, in India. Uh, uh, the media was state-owned. So we had only government television. And uh, in 95, after so much of praying and praying and praying, God opened the country for satellite television. It started in a small way. But today we have nearly 120 channels on satellite <laughs> in 11 different languages. Okay. Yes. And it, because India, every state has a different language. Yes. So it's like a foreign country in, in India itself, in every state. Yes, yes. <laughs> so everybody talks a different language in different states. Mm. Um, so by God's grace, we entered into television in 95. And uh, the first program itself, it was in Tamil, it was in our state uh, program, a state language. The first program itself began to touch lives. And today we have 40 programs every week in 11 languages. 40? Four zero. Ah. <laughs> and we produce 40 different programs. Oh. Children's program, women's yeah. program, youth program, talk shows, yes. ca uh, our public meetings, mm -hmm. then live shows, and so on. God is gracious to give us uh, mm -hmm. the strength and the revelation to do 40 programs a week oh. in 11 languages. Yeah. And uh, it reaches the whole of India. Yeah. The greatest thing is, mm. 
in the commercial marketing uh, reports that comes in, we call the IMR, yeah. uh, marketing uh, mm -hmm. uh, reports, which the companies say which program has what viewership rating and so on. Yeah. So it's an official report that comes from the marketing agencies, from the advertising mm -hmm. companies. <laughs> and we find our Jesus Calls prayer time programs because God has called us to pray. Yeah. Uh, we pray for the people on television, yeah. so it's called prayer time. Mm -hmm. Our programs come within the first five best watched programs okay. in each channel okay. amongst all the soap, soap operas, yeah. amongst the films, yeah. next to news. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Our program is the best watched yeah. in a country where only 2% are Christian. Yeah. Yeah. This shows that people long for the love of God, long for the love of Jesus. We talk about God's love, how much He loves them and how he gives them hope. Yeah. And that's why it's the best watch program. Mm -hmm. And um, now he is putting it in different countries, mm -hmm. in various networks, um, in Europe, in Canada, in Australia, and so on. But then God has also given us grace to start a university, yeah. the first Christian university in India, mm -hmm. offering engineering high levels of engineering and bachelors of engineering, mm -hmm. masters in engineering, and a PhD in engineering, computer science, civil, mechanical, electronics, electrical, and so on, mm -hmm. and uh, aerospace, which we are developing now. And you have a lot of students there now? We have about 3,500 students. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> and scientists running the college, uh, running the university. Our focus is, the Lord said, you must raise up Daniels and Josephs of this century. Yeah to touch the nation from the top mm. in the academic realm. So we equip them in the highest of academic knowledge. Yeah. At the same time, we impart into them the values mm. and the zeal to minister to the people. So God raises them and places them in high positions and they influence the country from the top and make a blessing to the society. So this is our mission, <laughs> to heal the broken-hearted. Yes. Now you have the people of the European country in front of you, and there are a lot of people with broken hearts. Mm. Can you uh, say something to the people here? What they can do? You can pray for them. Sure. And, sure. Uh, uh, and expect God to do the miracle. <laughs> Thank you first for coming to India. 38 times yes. you have come it to have pray for our time. people. <laughs> to pray for our people. And yeah. now God is gracious to give me an opportunity to pray for our friends in Europe. I think this is at the time now where the missionaries shall come the other way yes. from India to, yes. uh, to the Europe. Yes. And I especially want to thank the Danish missionaries. Mm. So many missionaries came from Denmark <clears throat> and they have given their lives for the people of India. And on their blood literally, mm -hmm. their sacrifice literally, they yeah. sacrificed their food here, mm -hmm. sent money to build the churches yeah. in India. Yeah. Today, so many missions stand in India. So many churches, yeah. so many orphanages, yeah. they are still there because of Denmark mm. <laughs> because of the Amen. Danish people. Amen. So God has to bless you in turn. Amen. We are waiting on that. <laughs> Your children have to get hundred times reward. Yeah. Yeah. So the Bible says, great shall be the peace mm. of your children Amen. and your children shall be taught of the Lord. Amen. Yes. It shall be true. Even today, my friends, yeah. maybe you are broken hearted and you say, I have no hope in this world. The Bible says, your hope shall not be cut off. Your hope shall not be in vain. It depends on whom you have put your hope on. Is it on the comforts of your life, on the money and the security that you have, or on a person in this world? Nothing is permanent in this world, but there is one who has an everlasting love. He says, I have loved you 
with an everlasting love. I will love you at all times, at all times. Whether you're good or bad, I still love you. And he has shown his love for you by giving himself on the cross. Taking your sins, your sickness, your sorrows on himself to redeem you from every one of these curses. All that you have to do is come to him. He says, come to me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. This is Jesus. He's ready. I came to him. He gave me rest. He has blessed me with joy. He's ready to bless you with joy. You'll be more than a conqueror. Would you open your heart and tell him, Lord, come into my heart. I have done everything possible. I am weak. You take over. I will let you rule my life. He is ready right now. Shall we pray? I want to pray along with our dear brother for you. And as we both agree in prayer, right now, the Almighty God, you will feel him now. You will feel him in your soul, in your spirit. I see a name. Sophia, you have another name starting with L. You know whom God is talking about. It's not me, it's the Holy Spirit. You have cancer. You say you have come to the end of the road. You had every treatment done. You had everybody support you. But your heart is broken to pieces without hope. God touches your heart right now. Receive him into your spirit and tell him, Jesus, you have paid the price for me to live. I know you're going to make me live. Sophia, God's power is coming upon you right now. Master, I see another name, Herbert. Herbert, God's healing power is coming into your soul. You are thoroughly broken because your family has been separated from you. But there is hope for you right now. You say, Lord, I receive you. I will give up my evil ways. Give me grace to be delivered. God's healing power is coming into every spirit, every soul. Master, let your mighty power flow into everyone's soul and everyone's spirit who is praying with us right now. Heal their souls, Lord. Heal their souls by your power and your love. Master, let nothing of the world ever be their confidence. Let Jesus become their confidence from today. Enter into their spirits. Sanctify them and purchase them with your blood that you have shed for them and cleanse them from every addiction and sin and make them your child. Make them your child. Heal their sicknesses, Lord. Heal by your power and deliver them right now. Prove that you love them, Lord. Build up their family life and give them all that they have lost, Master. All that they have lost, give it back to them, Lord. Give it back to them. They must have a full life full of joy from this very moment, from this very moment, from this very moment. In your presence there is fullness of joy. Let them experience that fullness of joy and confidence and strength in their life. Make the young people a somebody in this world, Lord. Let their nobodiness leave them. Let them feel they are somebody with Jesus in them. Honor these young people who are praying with us and bless them. Bless them. There is an old mother for whom the daughter is crying unto you right now. Listen to that cry. Lisa, God hears your prayer for your mother and God strengthens you right now and blesses your mother. He knows that you care for her. He will care for you. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your coming to the program. God bless you back to India. And we will say 
Thank you very much for you was with us in this program. God bless you.